Charity now means simply what used to be called alms, that is, giving to the poor. Originally it had a much wider meaning. Charity means love in the Christian sense. But love in the Christian sense does not mean an emotion. It is a state not of the feelings, but of the will. That state of the will which we have naturally about ourselves and must learn to have about other people. I pointed out in the chapter on forgiveness that our love for ourselves does not mean that we like ourselves. It means that we wish our own good. In the same way, Christian love or charity for our neighbours is quite a different thing from liking or affection. We like or are fond of some people and not others. It is important to understand that this natural liking is neither a sin or a virtue, any more than your likes and dislikes in food are a sin or a virtue. It is just a fact. But, of course, what we do about it is either sinful or virtuous. Natural liking or affection for people makes it easier to be charitable towards them. It is therefore normally a duty to encourage our affections, to like people as much as we can, just as it is often our duty to encourage our liking for exercise or wholesome food. Not because this liking is itself the virtue of charity, but because it is a help to it. The rule for all of us is perfectly simple. Do not waste time bothering whether you love your neighbour. Act as if you did. As soon as we do this, we find one of the great secrets. When you are behaving as if you loved someone, you will presently come to love him. If you injure someone you dislike, you will find yourself disliking him more. If you do him a good turn, you will find yourself disliking him less. Consequently, though Christian charity sounds a very cool thing to people whose heads are full of sentimentality, and though it is quite distinct from affection, yet it leads to affection. The difference between a Christian and a worldly man is not that the worldly man has only affections or likings and the Christian has only charity. The worldly man treats certain people kindly because he likes them. The Christian, trying to treat everyone kindly, finds himself liking more and more people as he goes, including people he could not have imagined himself liking at the beginning.
loving God, you abide though all things change. I am anxious and fearful, and I turn my heart to you, looking to you and leaning on your strength. It is written, Blessed is the one whose strength is in you. So bless me now with faith and courage. Help me to feel that you are with me, steadying and sustaining me with the assurance that I am loved. Be with me and bring me hope that in the days to come my aspirations may be fulfilled for my good and the good of those I love who depend on me. Banish my fears with the sense that you are always present to uphold and sustain me. As it is written, have no fear for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you. I will uphold you with the power of my righteousness. Loving God, when fears multiply and danger threatens, when sickness comes and death confronts us, it is your blessing of shalom that sustains us and upholds us, lightening our burden, dispelling our worry, restoring our strength, renewing our hope, reviving us. Amen.